Hello and welcome to a Scooty Raps tutorial video. With you as always, my name is Grant Denny, and today we'll be learning how to wrap the Segway GT1 or Segway GT2 electric scooter. This video will be labeled and broken up into parts down below in the video description, so feel free to skip ahead or to whatever part of the scooter you're currently wrapping. If you haven't purchased a Scooty Wrap, this video is 100% irrelevant to you. If you own a Segway GT1 or GT2, I encourage you though to go over to ScootyWraps.com and check out what options we have for your scooter. As you can see, I've already applied two red pieces to this scooter and accidentally left those out of this video, but we'll be starting with the rear fork piece as I like to call it. To line this piece up, all you do is use the circle on the left hand side as your guide and lightly place it down and once you're happy with your placement apply more firm pressure. Next piece we have is the footboard bottom. To easily apply this piece I like to start by finding the top left corner and lightly pressing down to find a good alignment. You see me using my finger there and I am following the edge of the scooter, lightly pressing down, following that whole straight line. And you see I'm not wrapping all the way to the bottom of the scooter yet. I'm just making sure I have a good alignment from left to right, all the way across the footboard of the scooter. Now that I like the alignment, I more firmly press down along the side there. And then once I've more firmly pressed down all the way along this side, I'm free to start working my way down, working the air out of the vinyl. You want to make sure you go evenly across this piece and all pieces, having the air escape from top to bottom. If you get ahead of yourself, you might cause the vinyl to have a little wrinkle, in which case you'll want to slow down and undo what you've just done. It looks like I got it first go here, no issues, so I'm just continuing to work out all of the air and you can see it escaping. Other than a pair of scissors to cut out all of the pieces at the beginning, no tools are necessary to apply a scooty wrap. You'll predominantly seeing me just use my, my thumbs and hands. At this point of the piece, I'm pretty certain I already have it applied. I'm just going around for a double, triply check to make sure all of that air is out of there. Next we have the footboard top piece. This skinny piece is quick to apply. We are again just going to apply it like the footboard bottom. We're going to find a corner. There I go finding the left corner, getting it aligned. And then similar to the footboard bottom, once I'm happy with the alignment, I'm going to lightly press it and go all the way down the edge, making sure I'm aligned to that edge just lightly at first as I go down the edge, making sure I like the alignment before I more firmly start to apply pressure. All right, it looks like I'm happy with the alignment, so now you see me going back and firmly applying the pressure, making sure I have that piece sealed to the scooter. We're gonna call these pieces the big wing and the little wing on the rear footrest here. Starting with the little wing, this piece is easy to apply. Just find, again, another corner. You see me using the bottom right corner, aligning it with the bottom, lightly pressing to hold that spot in position, and then I'm going to be lightly pressing to find the rest of the alignment, 
using the edge of the big wing to find the alignment for the little wing. Big wing. Again, using the bottom right corner and following the bottom line of this piece, I've lightly pressed. Oh, I didn't like my placement. I've lifted the piece back up to find better placement. Trying to align the piece again, lightly pressing down to hold that position. Instead, now using the top edge to line this piece up along the curve. Now that I like the alignment, you see me firmly pressing the piece down, getting the rest of the air out. Next we have the rear wheel or rim, and you're going to want to be sure to clean this piece twice, if not three times. Just be really sure it's nice and clean. Even if you just got your scooter from the box, uh, I believe they must use some grease to get this rubber tire on the rim. Uh, because it's a little greasy. If you, if you don't clean this rim ahead of time before trying to apply the vinyl, there's a chance that your vinyl will lose its adhesiveness. So just make sure that the surface is nice and clean and dry before applying the vinyl, or else it will fall off. To apply this piece, it helps to have the wheel freely able to spin so you can work your way around it. But to start, just lightly press to test your alignment and work your way around, just lightly pressing this rim piece onto the wheel to check your alignment as you go around. Now that we like our alignment, we see we're doing a good job, we're going to more firmly press to make this permanent before moving on to the rest of this wheel. There you see me spinning the wheel and working my way around. It helps to leave this, this rim piece attached to the backing still, as you can see that I'm doing. And as I work my way around, I'm removing more of the vinyl off of the backing. I'm doing this so that the vinyl doesn't uh, touch the carpet floor in this hotel room, as so not to pick up any debris that would show through underneath the vinyl. And now that you see I have applied it everywhere, I'm just double checking and making sure it's firmly applied in every single spot. Now we have the little angle piece. To apply this piece, I like to use the alignment of the, the hole that is cut. And again, lightly pressing to hold and check initial alignment before applying more pressure to make it more permanent. Using that edge, I like my alignment. I'm applying more pressure from the center and working my way to the other side.
Next is the big angle. To find alignment on this piece, I like to use the corner that I'm pointing at, the two corners really. Starting with the right corner and align it with these two edges. Check the top alignment. And I haven't firmly pressed down on this piece at all yet, this is just lightly resting. Here you see me using a, a debit card to aid me. Not required, but I don't have fingernails and I think it was helping me out of a pinch. Now that I like the alignment, you see me firmly pressuring, firmly applying pressure everywhere along the piece. Here we have the front fork piece. You'll want to be careful when removing the top layer of masking from the front fork pieces as they have cuts in them, in the vinyl that is, on the near the top of this piece, which make for an easier application. But when removing the masking, vinyl pieces which have cuts in them are at a higher risk of tearing if you are going a little too quickly. So just be sure to slow down when removing the masking from this piece and others with those cuts. To apply this piece, all we did to align it was use that oval cutout to align the piece center. And then I firmly applied pressure to the center of the piece first, and then to the right side, and then to the left side. Now working with those final flaps up top that those cuts have created and firmly sealing that left one down. Really be sure you see me trying to get the air out of that tight corner. Work the air out of the corner first and then move towards the outside. This top section is a little tricky due to its shape. Since it has a curved shape to it is why we added the cuts to help make it a little easier. But just due to the nature of it being such a complex shape, it is gonna be tricky to wrap this bit. So if you don't get it perfect, don't beat yourself up. There you see me, I think a little agitated that I'm not getting it perfect. But I promise you from any distance away, you will not notice that little fault or if you do have a little wrinkle that is forming, try to slowly undo it and go backwards and retry to apply again. Or if you think it's too far gone, once you've finished your whole application, if you have a heat gun or an air dryer, slowly heat up the piece and warm it up and try to work it out again. Here we have the front fender middle. Again, another piece with the Y cuts to make the application process easier over a curved surface. However, be extra cautious when removing the masking top layer after you've cut this piece out. Additionally, with these Y cuts, it makes it a little trickier to remove from the backing. As you can see here, I lift up one flap at a time, making sure to not go too fast and to rip the vinyl at one of those Y cuts. If you do end up ripping the vinyl at one of those Y cuts, it's really not a big deal. You, know, you might slightly see it up close, but again, from any distance, 
Um, small errors aren't really noticed. So now that we have the piece off the vinyl backing, I'm going to start with lining it up by the front and the back to center this piece. And while I check the alignment, I'm only going to lightly press down the center of this piece to begin. Once I like the piece's alignment and I've firmly or lightly pressed down the center, I'm going to make the alignment more permanent by starting to firmly press down in the middle. like so. Once you've gone all the way down the middle more firmly, then I like to work, start working with the flaps from one end to the other. So now you see me starting to work with that flap and that flap. And now I'm going to go to the next section of flaps, working my way from one side of this fender to the next. And the next flap. So I'm going bottom to top. I started with the center. I had the center firmly applied first, and once the center is firmly applied, I move it on to the flaps. Next is a front fender side piece, specifically this is the front fender right side we'll be applying. And to align this piece, I'm using that corner against the fork. And then the fender also has a line down the middle of it that I'll line the top of this piece with. Firmly pressing against that top line and now working my way down the piece now that I like my line. Now the front fender left side. Going to start by lightly placing the front of this fender. Just a light hold, not firmly pressed down on it yet. Still checking my alignment. And again, using that same top line that we used on the other side.
and you can see I'm still working on my alignment. I didn't like my alignment, so it wasn't too late to pick that piece back up and try again, working my way along that line a second time now. Looks like I have good placement, so I'm firmly pressing the piece down, working out the air now. Here we have the lower light. There's no exact way to align this piece. Just make sure you have it facing the correct direction. And it may take several attempts. Just lightly press down at first. And once you like your alignment on both sides, give it a more firm press. Sorry for the crazy angles of my face and up the nose shots. Next is the front handle. I believe this part of the scooter is meant to be grabbed so you can move the scooter around. And just like the lower light, we're just going to want to make sure that we have this piece facing the correct direction. So there, I had it the wrong direction. Oh, now I have it the right direction. And again, no correct way to line this piece up. It may take a several attempts. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's even on both the left and the right sides. You see I'm pointing at the bottom corners. I must be using them to line up this piece. I like the alignment. I'm firmly pressing down on that right side and then working my way to the next side. I believe my alignment wasn't perfect and a little stretch was in order. Just stretching that little piece between the two screws. and giving it a final press. Here we have the front cap. The front cap piece is fairly straightforward to apply. You're just gonna line it up with the two screw holes right there on the front and center. And once you have those two screw holes aligned, you're also going to want to check to make sure you're level so you're not angled to one side or the other. And you can do that by checking just the top and the bottom of this piece against the scooter edges. So I like that alignment. I got the screw holes dead on and I'm going to work my way to this right or left side working the air out slowly and now that we have that front centered and applied correct the rest of this piece will just fall into place there's also a screw hole on the left side and on the right side that this will align with Next we have the footrest. The footrest is a pretty straightforward piece to apply. One of the easier ones. And to align this piece, I just try to eyeball and center the top part to make sure it's centered on the edges there up to the, the big wing on both sides. 
Once I like that center placement, then I'm going to start working on that smaller edge. And there you see me again using a debit card, because I don't have any nails, just to seal that piece in there nice and deep. This is the rear fender. The rear fender also has those Y cuts that I discussed, so just be careful when removing the top film. You start with the rear fender centerpiece, and it's very straightforward to apply, and I, there's a little circle that this piece just applies directly over that will show through the vinyl, but I've just chosen to wrap just right over it. So there's those Y cuts that we mentioned, not only to be careful when removing the masking, but also to be careful when removing the vinyl from the backing like so. I'm starting with those Ys, removing those little Y cuts slowly to be sure not to tear them. And again, those Y cuts were added because this rear fender is a little bit of a tricky piece in the sense that it has some curvature to it. so. If you don't get a perfect application on this piece, don't beat yourself up too bad. I start by just trying to get a hold of it, get it managed, and to do that, I start with the center in the rear and try to get my alignment centered on the right side and the left side and now this piece is a little more manageable. And now that I like the alignment, I'm gonna... You see me lightly tapping all the way down the center of the right side, and all the way down the center of the left side. I haven't worked my way down around the curvature of either side yet. All I've done is start with the flat surfaces, kinda like I did with the front fender. Once you get these two sides aligned, I'm gonna start working down the curved edges, starting with the back. You see I'm starting to get some creases at the front here, and that's where we have these cuts in place. And you're just going to pick up and reposition those flaps, slowly working that air out where we have those creases form. And we're going to do the same on the other side. You can tell that this side gave me a little bit of trouble. I've had to pick it up and replace it several times. So it's not always a one shot.
We're gonna call this piece the rear cap. This is another pretty straightforward piece to apply. To align this piece, we are going to center it, starting on this flat part, using that notch. So where that red plastic is shown, there is a notch in the vinyl that goes around that red plastic, and that's what we're using to align the piece all the way to the top portion of the front cap where the front cap wrapped around the scooter. So we're going to start by checking our alignment. We didn't like our alignment, we've already repositioned. We've repositioned now a second time. We, we appear to like our alignment, so now we're going to start more firmly pressing down on this right side first. We're not worrying about the left side yet, we're just going to do the right side first. You want to work your way around that edge Get all the air around that edge before you work towards this other flat side. And then use the reflector oval and the cut in the vinyl to align the rest of this piece. And then put the notches into place and firmly apply. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Here is the middle knuckle, another straightforward piece to apply and easy to align. We're just going to use all of these screw holes that are already cut and line them up with the screw holes on the scooter. And again, I start with a corner. You're gonna see me use, the, I believe, that top left corner to start this application and go all the way to the edge. You'll wanna make sure, again, that this piece is level. So as you work your way around the scooter, that you're not going too far up or too far down. So there you see I didn't like my alignment, I am picking it back up and repositioning. I must have been at an angle, so I'm trying again. There I like my alignment, now you see me firmly pressing to make it more permanent. And I'm going to work my way around firmly applying pressure as I go, because the alignment is solid. Here we have the top knuckle. And to align this top knuckle piece, again, we're gonna use a screw hole. So I'm gonna start with this screw hole on the right-hand side of the scooter. And I'm gonna line up that edge of that screw hole to the edge of the scooter and the vinyl. Apologies for the chin zoom. I like my placement. I'm applying more firm pressure and I'm going to work my way around now to the other side's screw hole and use that one to align on that side as well. Next we have the neck or stem. To 
to align this piece, I'm going to start with the center screw hole behind the, the lever or the latch. So I'm going to carefully place it behind there and use that center screw hole to align this whole stem piece. Just lightly pressing to lightly hold it in place while I figure out the rest of the alignment. Just making sure and checking that it looks good. It looks like it's going to fit around the brake lines and everything's lined up before I'm applying more pressure. So it looks like I started in the center. I lined up that first hole on the bottom in the center. And then I've worked my way around the right side of this scooter first. Slowly applying applying pressure from the top to the bottom. Top to the bottom, as you see I'm doing right there. Working my way all the way around just this one side first. To that direction. Evenly working the air out that way from top to bottom. Using the brake lines and the screw holes to line this piece up. See, I haven't even started pressing down the other side yet. Just worrying about this side first. Now that that side is all evenly applied, we're going to work our way around the curvature of the stem from top to bottom. using the cuts in the vinyl to work the brake lines through those holes. Here we have the screen or display. I believe this piece might be a little different on the GT2. I'm not 100% certain, so I apologize GT2 owners if this piece doesn't exactly fit the same way, or it might not at all. But to align this piece, I start with those two fangs, those little triangles on the bottom there, and I stick them down deep in those corners that they belong in. Just trying to get that alignment, you see me trying and trying and trying and trying, just wanting it perfect. Just lightly picking up, lightly picking up, lightly picking up, lightly picking up, I still haven't found the alignment. Now I appear to be happy with it. Firmly pressing that bottom. And working my way around this left side first to that corner. And now working my the right side to that same corner I just got the left side to. And now I'm going to appear to do both of the tops at the same time using the screen in the center and in the top to help align the vinyl. Here we have the handlebar top, another delicate piece to be careful when removing the 
the top masking layer due to these Y cuts. And again, remove slowly from the backing as well. Slowly removing it from the backing just to make sure I don't rip the piece. But again, if you rip the piece, it's really no big deal. It'll just be a little visible. So to align this piece, I'm going to, again, just try my best to center it by eyeballing it. And using that inner, inner edge as my, my guide. Just lightly tapping, and then I'm going to go check to see on the right side how, how I did with alignment. Is it, is it centered? Did I go too far to the right? Do I need to pick it back up and try to make it more centered? It looks like I got good alignment, so I am more firmly pressing down along that line. And now I'm gonna work that Y cut into the curved edge. That Y cut again, allowing us to go into a curved area a little easier than without. If you look real closely, you can see my alignment was slightly too far to the left, so I'm a little over this edge, but it's close. Here are the handlebar bottoms. This is another piece to be cautious with when removing the top masking layer and when removing from the bottom layer, as to not rip those Ys. To line up this piece, we are going to use the corners again. mainly the corners of that rectangle, that big rectangle portion of this piece that you'll see. So just being careful to remove this piece slowly, not to rip the vinyl from the backing. Using that corner, as well as the edge on the left side of this piece here. If you get these alignments of these two parts of this piece correct, then the rest of the piece mainly falls into place. I'm just lining it up with that line of the scooter and then I'm going to use this corner against the display to line up the rest of the piece.
Now I'm going to go do the exact same thing on the other side and these two pieces will connect and meet right in the middle. The handlebar middles are another vinyl piece to be careful with when removing the top masking as well as when removing the vinyl from the, the backing. Just to be cautious to not rip again those Y cuts. And similarly to the handlebar bottoms, the handlebar middles are going to be cut into two pieces and then they're going to meet in the middle. To align this piece, I start by again using the corners against the screen or display. Slowly and lightly applying pressure at first just to check the alignment. Once I have the alignment to where I like it, more firmly applying pressure. Same thing on this side, just aligning again with the corners that go up against the display is what I found to work best. Apologies for the full head block.
easiest piece on the whole scooter to apply is this polygon. Just line it up, center it, place it, firmly press it. Next is the headlight top. This top headlight comes in two pieces. Just make sure we have it, the vinyl piece facing the correct direction. Just do your best to eyeball and center and reposition and pick up if needed. And then start with one side of the headlight and use the edges to line up the piece. using the edge of the vinyl, working my way over that edge of the headlight, and firmly applying, and do the same on the other side. The second part of this top headlight is the headlight bottom. We're going to line it up the same way we did the other portion. And just do our best again to center and pick it up and reposition if you need to. And again, just using those corners once more firmly placed to align. This is the top console piece. And to align this piece, we are just going to do our best to center it with the top and the bottom, making sure that it is also level so that we're not angling down to one left or right side as we work away around this piece. You can check this alignment on one side first by trying to first lightly place and get this alignment of the bottom to the top and then going around to check the alignment of a screw hole. So I'm just lightly pressing it, just holding its position here while I ch go and check the alignment on the right side. So I have the top and the bottom centered. It looks like I must not have been centered actually. I must have been angled to one side so I'm reef picked up the whole piece and I'm checking again. 
just lightly hanging on there while I go check the alignment, see if I like it now. It looks like the alignment's good. So now we're going to use that top piece of this vinyl against the top line of that scooter on both sides to align the rest of this piece. Sorry again for the head block. But again, I am just using the top of that vinyl against the line of the scooter. There I am showing that I've just lined it up. And I'm going to slowly work the air from the one side of this out to the other. Lined it up with that screw hole. Working the air away and around. Just on this left side first. Not worried about the right side yet. It also helps aligning this piece initially to check the alignment compared to the headlight, the top headlight, to make sure you haven't extended too far into the headlight. So just don't firmly press down until you've confirmed alignment on both sides is going to be a good fit. And again, using that top line, hopefully not blocked by my head. We appear to be good this time. Lining it up with that screw hole, as you could see. More concerned about the top of this piece. Now that I got the alignment of the top, I'm going to work my way around the rest of the bottom. This piece does leave a little bit of a gap just due to the complexity of this complex shape. It couldn't be full coverage. Then those little legs in the front will go around and hug the other side. A quick and easy piece to apply. This piece is the display bottom. You just line up the piece with the, with the screw holes and it'll fit perfectly. I start with just the top two is what I use for alignment. And once you get them, you can firmly press down in place and get the rest of the piece sealed on there. And with that, the Segway GT1 and GT2 tutorial is now complete. I hope you absolutely freaking love your newly wrapped scooter and the transformation that you've created. And I hope you're ready for all the new attention you're about to receive out there on the road. Thank you again for being a Scooty Wrap customer.